This video is about reproductive histology. Histology is quite common in your and quite often ignored. So let's not ignore it, let's learn it because these are easy questions if you know it. So this is how I learned it. I always try to follow a pattern or a system through which I used to remember things. So for example, I'm going to make my way from the ovary through the fallopian tube uterus, cervix, and downwards. So that's how I'm going to try to remember uh, the different histology. So let's first talk about ovary. What kind of epithelium are we going to see in ovary? Ovary is a glandular, okay? It needs bigger cells because it needs to produce all those hormones and all those things that are necessary for all the functions of the ovary. That's how I remember it. So from ovary, we're going to see cuboidal cells. Okay, so first we're going to see number one, cuboidal cells. And then now let's talk about the fallopian tube. Remember, it's a tube. A tube is like a column, right? So obviously, the next thing we're going to see in the fallopian tube is columnar epithelium. That's my number two. Let's keep moving down. Now we're in the uterus. What kind of cells are we going to see in the uterus? Still, it's a continuation of our column. So again, we're going to see columnar epithelium in the uterus. Just think of it as an extension of our column of the fallopian tube. Now even moving down, now let's say this is the cervix and then there is the endocervix and the ectocervix. And if we talk about specifically what cells are going to supply the endocervix, what is going to be your response? Again, our cervix or endocervix is a, it's, it's a, it's a continuation of our column. Again, we're going to see columnar epithelium. What about ectocervix? Okay, what about ectocervix? Now this is where we probe, we see, we open up just to get a picture of uh, our cervix whenever we do a pelvic exam. So this is where the cell starts to become a little bit different so that they can take a little bit more pressure. And that's why the columnar will finally change into squamous epithelium at our ectocervix. Now last but not the least is vagina. And what kind of cells are we going to see in the vagina? This is going to be the same cells as our ectocervix. So it's going to be squamous epithelium. Now that we know it starts with columnar because of the organ, follows our tube, it starts with, sorry, cuboidal, follows our tube with the columnar ending in squamous epithelium. See how you, when you draw a flow chart in your mind, it's so much easier to remember them? For me, at least, it was easier. Now my question is, whenever you are talking about histology, don't they always say whether it's stratified or pseudostratified, simple, don't they add those words? How do we know it's simple columnar or versus simple cuboidal? I will give you a quick and easy way to remember. If they go through abrasion, just add pseudostratified. For example, we know that the vagina and our ectocervix is going to go through abrasion, so we are going to add pseudostratified with it just because it has to be pseudostratified to withstand that kind of vibration. What about the rest? What about them? They're just simple columnar cells. As a result, they're going to be simple for every one of them. They're just simple columnar cells. So just add the word simple. So, and again, we can add simple here simple cuboidal cells because they are not going through as much abrasion as the uh, ectocervix and the vagina. Now my next question is 
Are any of these cells ciliated? Yes, there is one section in this reproductive histology which is ciliated. And I'm sure you are screwing in your mind what that is. It's going to be our fallopian. So this is going to be simple ciliated columnar epithelium. Is uterus going to be ciliated? No. Is our ovary going to be ciliated? No. Is any of the other structures going to be ciliated? Not really. So there you go. That simple ciliated columnar epithelium, which now makes the whole naming business so much simpler if we start with whether it's going to be squamous epithelium or cuboidal epithelium. And then we add those other additive things, thinking what kind of organ it is and what kind of functions they're going to have. And those are just additions that you can come up with, or at least uh, come up with a way of remembering it. Now that's, that was our reproductive histology. Here I would like to uh, talk about some other things which are not histo uh, reproductive histology just to bring some reference in here. Now two other areas in the body where histology is heavily tested is esophagus and bronchus. Now what kind of cells do we find in a normal patient? What kind of cells do we find in the esophagus? We find pseudostratified squamous epithelium. But people who throw up a lot, people who have GERD, their squamous epithelium changes into columnar, right? That is our metaplasia, which is our Barrett's esophagus, which can give us uh, adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. We know that one. What about bronchus? With bronchus, what kind of cells do we find in the bronchus? We find simple columnar. Okay. And what happens when these normal looking patients and these normal looking cells of the bronchus, these patients are constantly smoking, what kind of cell changes happens here? This simple columnar turns into squamous epithelium. It's just the opposite of our Barrett's esophagus. So that's how I remember it because it's the, just the opposite of the squamous, uh, of the esophagus uh, metaplasia. And I know that esophagus metaplasia most, for most of us is easy for us to um, remember. Other examples are we should not be seeing glands in our terminal bronchus if we start seeing glands in our terminal bronchus, that's also an example of met metaplasia. And there is many other examples, but these are the most common ones. I just wanted to mention them so that we are in perspective whenever we're studying for USMLE, um, that you know we study reproductive histology, what kind of cells do we see in other parts of the body, and what kind of scenario are we going to see when those areas get um, affected. So that's my interpretation of uh, reproductive histology.